Question 14 from Section 2 of the 2022 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A student carries out an investigation to determine the gravitational field strength of the Earth using a simple pendulum. A long string has a steel ball attached to the end of it and the length L of the pendulum can be adjusted. The ball is raised through a small angle and is then released. The student records the time for 10 complete swings and uses this to determine a value for the period T of the pendulum. The student then determines the value of T squared. And we slide down for the question that says the student repeats the experiment for different lengths and the results are shown in a table. You can see the left hand column the length in metres, he's changed it, or she's changed it from 0.2 metres up to 1.10 metres, and for each length has recorded the period squared, 0.85 up to 4.55. If we slide down further, it says the gravitational field strength, G, can be determined using T squared divided by L is equal to 4 pi squared divided by G. Using square rule paper on page 46, that's graph paper, draw a graph of T squared against L. So if we go to the next page, we can see that graph paper and I've already put the axes on it already for us. And you can see the length axis is going to go along the X axis. And I've decided to use every 10 squares to be stand for 0 0.2. So one small square on the x-axis really stands for 0 0.02. On the y-axis, we have to record t squared. And since we're going from 0 0.85 to 4.55, I think the best scale is to let 10 squares stand for 1. And that takes us all the way up to 5 like that. Every 10 squares takes us uh, up to 1 in the value of t squared. And we've marked t squared, measured in second squared, on the y-axis. I've recorded also the table results on the graph so we can plot them as we go along. So here we go then, we'll take a blue pen and we will record the points by plotting the points. 0 0.2 metres is here. I'm going to have 0 0.85 for t squared. So 0 0.85 brings up to here, it's 5. 6, 7, 8, and it's halfway between it. So halfway is going to take us into that square in there. And that's going to be bang on 0 0.2 and halfway between there. The next one is going to be 0 0.4, 1.6. So 0 0.4, 1.6 is going to take us up to about here. That's 1.6, 1, one square above the 1.5 mark. 0 0.60 is our next uh, length, and it's going to be 2.50. So 0 0.6 is going to be 2.50, so it's going to be up to here. 0 0.80 is 3.40, so 0 0.8 line, and it's going to be 3.40, so 3.40 is going to take us to that coordinate there. And the last one, 1 1.10, we have to slide the graph up a wee bit, is going to take us to 4.55. So 1.1 uh, 1 is going to take us to 4.55. There's 4.5 there. And 4.55 is going to be between this square here, like that. So there's our points. All we have to do now is draw with our ruler a straight line through the origin and also through the best fitting points. So we take our, you would take your ruler, I'm just drawing it on the screen here. You would take your ruler and you would do your best to make sure you're covering all the points. And I think that's us done them all as best for ability. There like that. In fact, I'll just change that to get even closer to that point through it moving. There we go. So that's us got our, our graph uh, done as best as we can. That's our graph done. So it's a straight line and we can see it passes through the origin. Now, if we slide down, we're asked to find the following. It says, calculate the gradient of your graph. Well, sliding back up again, we can work out the gradient of the graph by taking two points on the graph, which we can easily work out, and then finding the gradient of them. So we look closely at the graph, we can see uh, we'll take two points further away on our line. We could take 0, 0 on this one, because that's on the line here, it's just extended straight line. Uh, so we'll take 0, 0 for the first one, and we'll do these in a uh, in green forest as we can see them. So there's the first 
coordinate there, which will record a 0 and 0. And far up the line, maybe up to bit here, we'll choose this point here, which is on the line, and that's bang on 1, and it's 2 squares above the 4, so it's going to be 4.1, 4.2. So it's going to be 1, 4.2, so 1.0, and 4. 0.2 upwards. So there's our two sets of coordinates and we know that to work out the gradient of a graph M is equal to the difference in the Y coordinates divided by the distance in the X coordinates. That's what we have to find out. I'll just change colour again. So the change in the Y coordinates, we can call this uh, X2 and that will be uh, Y1, sorry Y2, and this will be X1 and that will be y1, that's the two zero zero zero. So our gradient formula is going to be uh, y2 minus y1, if we stick to our maths formula, put a bracket around that, divided by x2, uh, divided by x, x2 minus x1 for our denominator. So we plug in our answers for this one, then you can see y2 is going to be 4.2, so 4.2 take away uh, y1, and it's going to be 0. So 4.2 take away 0, divided by x2, which is going to be 1, and it's 1.0 take away the y, take away the, the x1, which is 0. So we've got 4.2 divided by 1, so our gradient is going to be equal to 4.2 divided by 1, is going to equal to 4.2. So that's us worked out the gradient of the graph. Question 14 continued, part B. Well, we did that. We worked out the gradient of the graph. And the gradient of the graph was m equal to 4.2. We'll just leave the units out for the moment. If we summarise what we've got, it's this situation here. We have got a straight line passing through the origin of a t squared along the y-axis and an l along the x-axis. The length of the pendulum being plotted along the x-axis and the period squared in the y-axis. So we can really exchange those for the following. We can say that's the y-axis here, and that's the x-axis there. And this is going to be the gradient m. Remember, m is a gradient. So we know that for a straight line, y is going to equal to mx. That's a straight line which passes through the origin. Now, we can rearrange that, and we have that's really saying that t squared is equal to the gradient times the L. So to find the gradient, we just really divide both sides by L. So T squared divided by L is going to give us the gradient M, which is really equal to, if we look up here, T squared divided by L is 4 pi squared upon G. So 4 pi squared upon G. So there we have what the gradient is equal to. It's 4 pi squared upon G. So if we cross multiply to get what the value for G is, Therefore, we get the following expression. g is going to equal to 4 pi squared divided by the gradient m. Remember, m is the gradient, not the mass. And we just worked out what that is. So it's a simple case of working out what the gradient is by putting in the numbers. So g is going to equal to 4 pi squared divided by the gradient. And the gradient is going to be 4.2. So we do 4 pi squared divided by 4.2 we end up with a value of 9.4. Now, what about the units of this then? Well, we know when we worked out the gradient, the gradient had the units of, well, it's going to be t squared divided by L for the gradient. See, gradient is t squared upon L. So if the gradient has the units second squares divided by length in metres, so that's the gradient units, which is m. Um, a second squared divided by m. So if we in fact invert that and divide by 4.2, the m is going to invert this here, and if we're going to have 9.4 m s to the minus 2. So you can see that's a familiar unit because m s minus 2 is acceleration, which is really the force over the mass. So really we'll work out the units for g, the value of is going to be 9.4 and Meters per second per second is the same as saying force over mass, which is the same as saying newtons per kilogram, which of course is units for the gravitational field strength. And that's how we do that experiment and get a result.